So we, we pray our act of fun. Let us rejoice and be glad and give glory to God, for the Lord our God the Almighty reigns. And so we gather and we gather in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We pray that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. So just to welcome you to Mass this morning. Uh, it seems a little darker. I'm going, did I forget a light? It feels a little darker today. I don't know why that is. It's a, it's a windy and a kind of dreary day here. At, it's only starting, obviously, but we'll hope for the best. But we hope you are well. I hope you had a good night. And uh, before we start... Uh, just a word of thanks to Jack. I still haven't gotten to text or email back, but you've all heard the name Jack O'Shea regularly. Uh, and he's again put something together around the stations of the cross that looks uh, really good, but I still haven't gotten to text you. So thanks, Jack. A few birthdays today as we start. Nelly Molyneux is 91 today. So Nelly, 91. Happy, happy birthday. And um, we think of Mike and Kay and all the family. Today, also locally, a certain Dahi O'Donnell is, is, I'm not going to say his age, but he's not 91. We can say that. Dahi is not 91. So a big happy birthday to Dahi locally and his family. And we hope they're all well. His daughter, Mairead, is now Dr. Mairead, who graduated as a doctor and will be kind of starting um, as a doctor in around the 20th of May, I think, Mairead. So... A uh, family of just uh, great people, so we send all our best wishes to the O'Donnells and happy birthday, Dahi. And Michael, uh, there's a Michael today, Eamon's Michael, is 13, a teenager today, but he's in America, so I suspect he's in his bed at this time. So the, they're the people we, we remember on those fronts. And as always, we start by praying, we light a candle, and feel free to do this at home. And suddenly the world around us changes. One small flame is all it takes to let the darkness know that it cannot. So we put that candle on Dahi's uh, family picture there and we think of Dahi. Also in our prayers today we think of a young girl Sophie who's having tests in Cromwell. So we think of Sophie, we hope all goes well for Sophie today. And as we think of young people just at the start, we think of Tady, a, a young man as such in Castle, Maine, who, who's going through treatment. So we think of him. And Dahi has a little baby, Arthur, in, in the, the unit with them there. So we think of him. And we've been remembering Errol and Anya and Lucas and so on. So look, we're here to pray. And as always, we dust the sand from our feet as such and let go of the past. And so we pray for the times, Lord, we've held on to grudges rather than let them go. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For the times we've preferred to expose another's fault rather than overlook them. Christ of mercy. Christ of mercy. And for the times we've been slow to love. Lord, have mercy. And so may Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. And let us pray. And that's why we're here to pray. So just take a moment and call to mind a prayer that's in your heart. And in the silence, give it to God. And so we give you and your thoughts and your prayers to God. And we offer this Mass as Bob Mould Queen's fifth anniversary. So we remember Bob and his family and friends, and I think that my great-grandmother's anniversary will be today as well. So we, we give all then to God and your prayers to God as we pray. Grant, almighty God, that celebrating the mysteries of the Lord's resurrection, we may merit to receive the joy of our redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. So the first reading, as always at the moment, is from the Acts of the Apostles. Actually, today is the Feast of Blessed Edmund Rice, but there's no reading set aside for that feast. It's a relatively new feast, but we think of the Christian brothers uh, and Blessed Edmund Rice. But the first reading says, Those who had escaped during the persecution that happened because of Stephen travelled as far as Phoenicia and Cyprus and Antioch, 
but they usually proclaimed the message only to Jews. Some of them, however, who came from Cyprus and Cyrene, went to Antioch where they started preaching to the Greeks, proclaiming the good news of the Lord to them as well. The Lord helped them, and a great number believed and were converted to the Lord. The church in Jerusalem heard about this, and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. There he could see for himself that God had given grace, and this pleased him, and he urged them all to remain faithful to the Lord with heartfelt devotion. For he was a good man, filled with the Holy Spirit and with faith, and a large number of people were won over to the Lord. Barnabas then left for Tarsus to look for Saul, and when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. As things turned out, they were to live together in that church a whole year, instructing a large number of people. It was at Antioch that the disciples were first called Christians. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. On the, the response is, O oh, praise the Lord, all you nations. O oh, praise the Lord, all you nations. O oh, praise the Lord, all you nations. Uh, sing out to the Lord. The Lord prefers the gate of Zion to all Jacob's dwellings. O oh, praise the Lord, all you nations. Babylon and Egypt I will count among those who know me. Philistia, Tyra, Ethiopia, these will be her children, and Zion shall be called mother, for all shall be her children. O oh, praise the Lord, all you nations. It is he, the Lord Most High, who gives each his place in his register of peoples, he writes. These are her children, and while they dance they will sing, in you all find their home. O oh, praise the Lord, all you nations. And so we, we greet the Gospel. time when the feast of dedication was being celebrated in Jerusalem. It was winter and Jesus was in the temple walking up and down in the portico of Solomon. The Jews gathered round him and said, how much longer are you going to keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus replied, I have told you, but you do not believe. The works I do in my Father's name are my witness, but you do not believe. Because you are no sheep of mine. The sheep that belong to me listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life, they will never be lost. And no one will ever steal them from me. The Father who gave them to me is greater than anyone. And no one can steal from the Father. The Father and I are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And as we bring our prayer, a microphone in front of just uh, to flatten or tidy up the altar cloth uh, before Mass. I forgot to put it back up, but it shouldn't have affected anything, but just in case. So uh, the Gospel said, The Father and I are one, so we're called to be one. Calling, being called to be one doesn't mean that we're called to be the same, we're all unique, we're all different, but to be one means to be united. So we pray that as a church and as a people, we will strive to be one. And particularly on a faith front, that we'll work in unison with our Christian, um, our other Christian churches and denominations, recognising all that we hold in common and celebrating that. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. In that first reading, it, it talked about uh, being filled with the Holy Spirit again that Barnabas was a good man filled with the Holy Spirit. We pray that we will be filled with the Holy Well, we are filled with the Holy Spirit, but it's like being filled with something sometimes we don't use or tap. So 
So we pray for the grace to be filled with the Holy Spirit and to be prompted and strengthened and guided by the Holy Spirit. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. It talked also about God had helped them. It said the Lord helped them and God had given them grace. So we pray for that help and that grace for you, for those who are sick, for those who care for the sick, for your loved ones. So we pray for, that the Lord will help us and that God's grace will help us and strengthen us. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. It said it was at Antioch that the disciples were first called Christians. Uh, where is our Antioch? Where is the moment, and I hope there are many, little Antioch moments during every day where people around us can look and say, yeah, that man, that woman's a Christian. So we pray that we will have many Antioch moments in each and every day. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And then they talked again in the Gospel of, about Jesus as a shepherd and the sheep listening to his voice. So we pray that we'll have a listening heart, a heart that listens to all that's happening within and around us, a heart that listens to others, because to listen is to love. Lord, hear us. We pray for those who are sick. As I say, we think of a Sophie who's having tests today. We think of the young man, Tavi, and Dahi, of course, and Arthur. We think of all those who are sick. I, I mentioned a young doctor last night, Kevin, who's been diagnosed with the virus. So we think of him. We think of a, a mother dying in a nursing home, another mother, Caroline, who's been brought home to be with her family. We think of all those people that we, we mention or that are in our hearts, and we ask God to let the warmth and strength of his healing love flow through them. Lord, hear us. And we remember our dead. We, we pray for Bob Mulqueen and his family on the occasion of his fifth anniversary. And as I say, I remember my great-grandmother as well. And we give all our loved ones to God who have gone before us when they're with God, but we just pray for them and ask them to pray for us. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and may perpetual light shine upon them, and may they rest in peace. So we make peace in all our prayers, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. It's the fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. It's the fruit of the vine and the work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you, the humble and contrite hearts. And Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from all my sins. And so we pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. And we ask that through Christ. So we pray, the Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father of mercies and faithful God. For you have given us Jesus, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer. He always showed compassion for children and for the poor, for the sick and for sinners, and he became a neighbour to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the world that you are our Father and that you care for all your children. And so with all the angels and saints, with one voice, we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. 
So make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down their spirit upon them like the Jews for, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Brenda our Bishop and all your people. Remember Bob, our Queen, and all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Peter and Paul, and all the saints, and Blessed Edmund Ignatius Rice, and all those who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. And it's through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. And so we bring our prayers to God, and we pray for you and those who are dear to you as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who sent your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. So we pray, may that peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. And let us offer each other a sign of that peace. And send that peace out to each other. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. So we pray, behold Jesus, the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. So we, we kind of make that spiritual communion at the depths of ourselves, where we connect to, to each other, we connect to God, to ourselves, to the earth, and those common forms.
My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at me spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. And we might give you a couple of verses of Queen of the May. Malak and Bulkan and Amar. 
Eucharist now. So look, thanks for being with us, and we'll finish with the stations. But more importantly now we pray, the Lord be with you all and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless and keep you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This Mass is ended. We'll go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. So, uh, as always, I will come down and try and uh, get the thing started for you. All of you well. Sorry, I keep, I keep weights on the stations practically to keep them flat. Now, so, hopefully I'm bringing the camera so that you'll be able to see the stations. I'll put them into the second layer now and that they're ready for rule. And Noah Cullhand is the first one. So, I'm just pulling the camera, as I say, so that you can get a better look at Noah's lovely artwork. Uh, all being well now and I'll bring that down. Okay. So, there we go and we have Hannah's flowers just to the side and we remember her son Michal as we do this. So, the first prayer I suppose we pray, it says, Lord, in walking the way of the cross with you, help us to draw close and feel your love so true. As well as your suffering, may the love that we see encourage and inspire us to be the best we can be. We entrust you our crosses and the people we know seeking healing and peace, seeking grace as we go. So, the first sentence, uh, station, I do that every morning. The first station is uh, coloured in by uh, Noah over there in Brewery. So we think of Noah and we think of his grandparents and I know it must be hard, I'm so conscious of people not being able to be with their grandchildren and all that goes with it. So we, we think of you all, and this is where Jesus is sentenced to death. And I suppose many people receive a sentence as such, and particularly those who are sick at this time or, or, or finding it difficult, you can kind of relate to how Jesus must have felt. So we bring all those, those things, those who are sick, those who are unwell. We particularly think of those people in our world who are sentenced as such because of maybe where they come from or the colour of their skin or their gender or sexuality. We pray that we'll never do anything that will sentence another, one to, another person to death in word or deed. And we pray, we adore, oh sorry, before we, let us pray. At times life is tough and it can feel so unfair. At times we may wonder, does anyone care? May we try to be kind and never cause pain. May God uphold us both in our struggle and strain. So we adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. So thanks very much for that, Noah. And next we have your sister, Olivia's a picture of Jesus taking up his cross, and also Vicky Lee's. So we, we think of ye, we hope you're well. And I suppose we all carry crosses, some, Oh, do you know what I've realised? I forgot to, and you know, I'll leave it at this stage. They're usually on a step that I have slightly to the right, just me. Uh, so we all carry crosses. Some are visible, some known to us alone, and we wish it wasn't so. Suffering is awful. It can rob us of our hope, our strength, our peace, and our joy. So Lord, help us try to lessen suffering wherever we find it, and help us to bravely accept the crosses that we can't change, trusting that we're more resilient than we think and trusting that we're never alone uh, in what we go through. So we remember all those carrying crosses, those visible, those known to those people alone. And we pray, we, our lives are a mix of both sunshine and rain. We freely share our joy, but we often hide our pain. May we reach out to others struggling under a cross and may God and others help us in our times of loss. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. So thank you, Olivia, and thank you, Vicky. And the next station we have is Circe's. And this is, thank you, Circe, and this is where Jesus falls for the first time. And we all fall. It's never nice to fall, but uh, sometimes we fall because of our mistakes. Sometimes we're forced to the ground because of the pressures of life or work or college. 
It's never nice to fall, but while falling is part of life, getting up is a bigger part. So we, we pray that for the grace to always pick ourselves up when we fall. And we pray for the grace and generosity to pick others up when they fall as well, so that we, we kind of reach out to those who are hurting. And so we pray. None of us are perfect, we make many a mistake. Falling short of our best brings its own heartache. So may we be compassionate to others who fall. May God, and help, may God help us to rise and strive to stand tall. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? So thank you very much, Saoirse, for that. We hope you're all well. And now we have Gráinne Mohallis and we have uh, Ava Carls, isn't that? Or Nisha Carls, sorry, Ava's is next. Sorry, Nisha. And so this is where Jesus meets his mother. And we, we, prob we presume that maybe they didn't even get a chance for words. But reflecting on it, we know that a parent's love goes deeper than words. Whatever we're going through, a parent's touch, a parent's look, a parent's presence helps us immeasurably on our journey. And so we remember all mothers and fathers. We especially remember all those who, have, like Mary, have been brokenhearted, watching the suffering or death of a child, or brokenhearted because of the turmoil in their family. So we pray for all parents who have to go through that. We call to mind a mother, a few mothers that, that are dying at this time. May God bless and strengthen all parents. And so we pray. A parent's love is unwavering, so strong, so true, so deep. It feels a child's pain when they struggle, when they weep. Lord, draw close to parents and those struggling to cope. Bless and protect them and give them reasons to hope. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. So thanks very much, Nisha and Gráinne, and we hope you and your families are well. And this is Nisha's sister, Ava, and Ava's drawn Simon of Cyrene, helping Jesus carrying his cross. Now, we don't know whether Simon wanted to, but he, he helped. So this station reminds us to, to give thanks for those who helped us to carry our crosses, particularly those in the whole world of, I suppose, medicine at this time, and all those who work in the HSC and the health service around caring and cleaning and all those various parts in nursing homes and hospitals. We think of all those organisations who help others carry their crosses. We think of family and neighbours and friends who help us. So we pray that we'll always uh, do our best to ensure that nobody's left to carry a cross alone. Simon was forced to help Jesus in his time of need, as to carry a cross alone makes one less likely to succeed. May we be a Simon to others and help them carry their load. And Lord, give us strength when we're struggling on the road. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Thanks very much, Ava. And now we have five lines sent in the station where Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. And we'll just always say, look, she stepped out of the crowd and she used what she had. And her kindness is still remembered. So, Lord, when we encounter suffering, help us to be willing to do something. To speak a word of kindness or to do an act of kindness using whatever we have to hand, trusting that a little kindness can and will make a big difference. Veronica stepped from the crowd using the little that she had, trusting an act of love could transform a moment that was sad. From little acorns, great oaks grow, or so we have been told. Veronica reminds us that little acts are made of gold. 
We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Were you there when they nailed him to a tree? Were you there when they nailed him to a tree? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they nailed him to a tree? So thanks very much, Saif. And now the next station we have is Billy Cosgrove. So Billy has drawn Jesus falling er, uh, the second time. And Billy, we hope you and Katie and all the family are well. And sometimes even with help we fall again, and that's hard. Falling down is one thing, but staying down is another. So irrespective of how often we fall, Lord, help us to try and rise up. Even if we feel we can't or we don't have the desire, help us to trust that with your help and others, we can. So if we just hold on tight, reach out and hold on to you, to others and to hope. To fall down once again can cause us to despair and leading us to doubt our value, strength, and prayer. May we reach out to all who have fallen to their knees. Lord, give us help to rise up. Oh, please, Lord, please. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. So thank you very much, Billy. And now we have Ali Lund's picture, and Ali has drawn Jesus consoling the women of Jerusalem. And I suppose... It reminds us that even if we're going through difficult times, not to be so self-absorbed or self-obsessed that we fail to see, hear, and attend to the hearts of others. So just like Jesus did, we pray that even when we're preoccupied, we'll also try and think of others. Being full of ourselves leaves no room for others. It stops us from being good sisters and brothers. Heal hearts that are heavy with your help from above. And in the midst of our hearts, Lord, help us to love. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. So thank you very much, Ali, for that. Uh, and now the next station that we have is Nasa Hulhins. So Nasa, we hope you and all the family are well. Now I'll bring it in close so that you can see it. This is where Jesus falls a third time. And so his people helping him up. And so sometimes, despite our best efforts, we fall into the same mistakes and tri- sins and traps. And we wonder, will we ever be free of our, sum- our suffering, our compulsions, our addictions, our ha- bad habits? We think of families at this time living with addiction, living with domestic violence, living with things that aren't good for them. It's tougher now than ever. So, Lord... Help us to keep fighting the good fight and to keep picking ourselves up each time we fight, fall and help us not to lose heart. And rather than count the times we fall, help us to count the times we rise and may we strive to help others rise too. We repeat our mistakes and we can't but wonder, will our weaknesses always pull us asunder? While falling is tragic, it's worse to stay down. Lord, help us to rise up and turn our lives around. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Were you there when they laid him in a tomb? Were you there when they laid him in a tomb? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they laid him in a tomb? So thanks very much, Nasa, for that. And we hope you're all keeping safe and well. And the next station we have was sent in by Cahill Connery. And it's where Jesus is stripped of his garments. And we think that, look, after all the physical suffering, then along comes another suffering where someone is stripped of their dignity. So in this station, we think of the times maybe we've tore strips off others. 
and strip them of their dignity, their worth, and their good name. We pray that rather than strip others of, of, of their garments or strip them of their good name and dignity, instead we pray that we'll clothe them, clothe them with tenderness, love, compassion, and understanding. And so we pray. Shaming and condemning seems okay when we're mad. Spiteful comments or online posts to make others feel bad. Bless those hurting in our world whose dignity has been stripped. Remind us of our worth when our sense of self has slipped. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. So thank you, Cahal, even for the messages that are a little awry. You'll never walk alone. Hmm. Now, uh, Maya Lees is the next one. And Maya, we, we, you've drawn... Jesus being nailed to the cross, so I'll bring it in a little closer for people. And so we, we can't but wonder what that moment must have been like, to, to that last breath, uh, and to have your hands and feet held down and physically nailed to a cross. And there was a lovely reflection in this morning's Office of Readings and the breviary that talked about, I, I, I meant to bring it over, so look, I forgot, but anyway, it was kind of again a bit like St. Catherine of Siena's uh, image of love holding Jesus to the cross. He kind of felt that in each of the wounds he created more space for us in his heart. So I suppose in this moment we pray that there was a love that helped you, Jesus, and we pray that love will help those who feel they're kind of nailed to crosses because of sickness or bereavement or struggles. Sadly, sickness and suffering are part and parcel of life. Even Jesus faced difficulties and moments of strife. May we never be indifferent and ignore another's pain. Walk with us always, Lord, both in sunshine and in rain. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. So thank you very much, Maya. And the next one we have... It's where Jesus dies on the cross. So we have Maya, uh, Emma and Katie and Jerry's uh, uh, pictures of Jesus dying on the cross. So hopefully they'll all stay there and we'll get a sense of them anyway, well, not the fullness of them. And how we, we can't but wonder how this must have felt, Lord, and that last breath and suddenly it was all over. So, and yet it was really only beginning. So we think of all those who are dying at home, in hospital, in nursing homes. We think of those uh, you've asked us to remember. We think of a young mother, Caroline, dying too, and how hard that is for our family. We think of older mothers. We think of all who are dying. May they know that their last breath is simply a letting go of the limitations and struggles of life and an embracing of a life and a love and a peace that are beyond all telling. May they be held in love and prayer at this time, even though we may feel at a distance. Sadly, death is so final it robs us of those we love. May we trust they're at peace with God up above. Love is sacred and eternal, and friendship is forever. May this love encourage us, Lord, to never say never. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Were you there when they raised him from the tomb? Were you there when they raised him from the tomb? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they raised him from the tomb? And so what we do now is we'll take these three. And thank you, Emma and Katie and Jerry. We hope you're all well. And now we have Sive Lyons again, who sent us in this uh, draw colouring of Jesus being taken down from the cross. And so, Lord, the, the nails were prized free and your body was taken from the cross. May we always treat the body with great reverence and dignity, both in life and in death. May we always realize how sacred each person and each life is, from its earliest moment to our final breath. Wherever possible, 
We pray that we'll help people down from the crosses that they're nailed to while there's still time. We're made in the image and likeness of the God of love. Our sacredness and dignity comes from within and above. May we never doubt our worth. We have a dignity that's true. Lord, your spirit gives value to all we are and all we do. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. So thank you very much, Sai, for that. And now our next one is uh, from Cahar O'Keefe over in Kilfinney, and it's where Jesus is laid in the tomb. So all the struggles are over, and, and Jesus is literally uh, laid to rest in a tomb. But for the disciples, so too are there, is their loved one laid to rest, their hopes and their dreams. Everything looked like an absolute disaster, a total failure. So Lord, in this station, help us to trust that there's always more than meets the eye. And that even when it looks like a disaster, to trust that it's not the end. And like I say, it'll be okay in the end. And if it's not okay now, well, for now, it's not the end. They say where there's life, there's hope, but I'm not so sure. Where there's hope, there's life seems more likely to endure. So may we try to give hope to both stranger and friend and help them to see that all will be well in the end. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. So thank you, Cahar. We hope you and all the family are well. And now we have your brother Fionn, the theologian, uh, picture of the resurrection. Fionn wanted to remind us that uh, the, 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 there is always the more, thank God, and that the story didn't end where we think, uh, where, where we think it ends. It actually went on. So death isn't the end of our story, it's only the middle. The end of our story is a life and a, a, a love that never ends. So we pray in this mystery, Lord, in all the world religions, you're the only God who suffered. A symbol of your loving solidarity with us, especially in our struggles and our limitations, in our loneliness and isolation, in our fear and anxiety. So Lord, as we've walked with you, we pray that you will walk with us now and help us to trust that you never leave us to face our suffering alone. And we pray God's blessing on you. And I see someone say, more, more about going along. Good luck with that today. It's windy out here, so I, I hope it's better in Aldara. Anyway, we pray God's blessing on you as we pray. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you and your families and keep you well and enclose you in the shelter, the love, the light and the warmth of the Trinity. May he strengthen his spirit in you and bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Were you there when they raised him from the tomb? Were you there when they raised him from the tomb? Oh, oh, oh sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they raised him from the tomb? So once again, to thank you very much for, for being with us and just to wish again a very happy birthday to Nelly, to Dahi and to Michael and we hope you all have a good day. And more importantly, we pray that you'll stay safe Stay well and stay home, and God bless.